Welcome to God's View. We're so glad you joined us. Oh my gosh, for the next few weeks, we have a very, very, very special guest, and um, that is Bob Cornuke, and he will be the first one to tell you that many people call him an archaeologist, but he's actually evangelist archaeologist, loves the Lord with all of his heart, and he's going to uh, tell us a lot of really interesting things today, what's happening as he's going on these finds and the things that he has found. Many stories, great testimony, so you want to call some friends, and I am so serious. You know, we tell you that a lot, but call some friends, and then also call our prayer lines as we're going through the program. 307-637-PRAY, that's 7729, our prayer partners stand by to pray with you. We are so excited, the salvations and the baptisms in the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit and the people's lives that are getting changed as they call them prayer lines. We are just so humbled and honored that we can be there for you and pray to see your breakthrough in your life, no matter what it be, marriage, uh, divorce, uh, kids gone astray, whatever, we are here for you. Mm -hmm. Call because prayer makes a difference. And then before we get into the show, I don't want to uh, break up the anointing at all, but we got to thank one of our sponsors and that's Sierra Trading Post. Thank you, Sierra Trading Post, so much. They're a Christian-based uh, company. Uh, all over the world, you can go on the website across the bottom of the screen. Make sure when you check out, you use that key code GODSVIEW11. Uh, they will know that uh, their support is making a difference, and you get 20% off. And they have fabulous clothes. You, I, I've said it 100 times. I wear most of their uh, clothes from Sierra Trading Post. They have for the mountain climber, the hunting, the fishing guy, skiing, uh, mountain climbing. They have uh, all, just kitchen wear and they have glam too. And so you want to go there, get a deal and, and help them keep helping. I mean, help us to bless them so that they'll keep supporting us to come into your home every week to touch your life. Okay. Enough said, go to the bottom of the screen. You'll not be sorry. Okay. New viewers. I'm Charlene back to Marion. This is Lana Gardner. We have Jennifer Griffin and our new co-host. Hallelujah. Very dark haired one. Peluso. <laughs> yes. And and Labretta, sorry, she's not with us yeah. today. She's under the weather. Pray for her. Yeah. And then right over here, our very special guest. Thank you so much, Bob. Good to be here. Bob Cornuke. The Middle East, a region of the world filled with complex cultures and beliefs, and for thousands of years, the center of conflicts touching the rest of the world. This same region has also been God's stage for amazing events that have helped shape civilization and bewildered mankind as we struggle to understand and interpret biblical miracles. Skeptics claim that the Bible is merely a book filled with fables and folklore, while others believe it to be a detailed map of discovery, not only for the soul, but to archaeological evidence crying out to be revealed. Well, I met a man named Jim Irwin who was the eighth man to walk on the moon. He was a piece of history. When he came back from the moon, he wanted to do something different with his life. He felt that he had a calling, a calling by God, to go look for lost locations in the Bible. He was involved heavily with looking for Noah's Ark at the time. Meet Bob Cornuke, a former crime scene investigator and member of an elite SWAT team unit. Now a biblical investigator, international explorer, and author of numerous books, Bob has participated in over 25 expeditions searching for lost locations described in the Bible. And we're here primarily to see if any of the eyewitness accounts throughout history have any merit. There's a lot of people that say that Noah's Ark is in this very canyon. It's 
recruited by Apollo 15 astronaut Jim Irwin to serve as his personal security advisor on an expedition in search of Noah's Ark in terrorist-held eastern Turkey. The two formed a bond and became close friends. Several years after Irwin's death, Kornuk founded Base Institute to expand on the mission of his mentor and friend. Bob's expeditions in search of the Ark of the Covenant, Paul's shipwreck, and Noah's Ark have yielded significant archaeological finds directly supporting scriptural accounts of these events and garnered international media exposure. Tracing the footsteps of some of the Bible's most recognizable figures has led Bob straight into some of the most inhospitable places for Westerners anywhere on the planet. Held prisoner no less than five times and facing death on several occasions, Bob continues his quest for one unavoidable reason. The truth is out there, and that truth can be found, but only if you're willing to look. Evangelist, archaeologist, adventurer. Yes, Bob's, all those things. Bob's been uh, traveled across Afghanistan during U.S. bombings. He, he's been held captive, what, about five times? Five times. Oh, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> 25 different expeditions. You're in for the most exciting. He's like an Indiana Jones. Yeah. Exactly. Seriously. You'll see his little clip in, in, you know, at the end and in the beginning or wherever they put it. And it's like Indiana Jones. It is like really exciting. You just need the hat. <laughs> Just, oh, he on the on the on the on the clip that uh -huh. they'll see. He's got the hat. Oh, he and he's out the there hat. on the boats, and he's out there doing fines, and he's going up these stairs with this torch, and it's like real Indiana Jones. It's cool. So, Bob, just go and tell us some stuff. History Channel, you've History been on Channel. History. Well, we just we just had a two-hour special on History Channel called Proving God. Wow, and very well nice. Uh, and I get asked to do history and National Geographic and all wow. those quite a bit. But you know, a lot of times they'll look at things uh, from a viewpoint of a naturalistic happening. They, uh -huh. they, they, you know, God, the divine is taken out of it. Mm -hmm. And that, that is where I kind of come in and try to put mm -hmm. a flag, is that you know, we, we don't need a natural explanation for every supernatural event. God did these great miracles in history. I'm a former police investigator, homicide investigator, FBI trained homicide investigator. Mm -hmm. And I graduated from the FBI Homicide Institute, and I go out and find evidence that shows that the, that the Bible is historically, prophetically, mm. and contextually accurate. And the world today all says, well, yeah, there's, there's no evidence. Well, let me tell you, they're not in the know. Yeah. Because there's evidence. Not only is there evidence, Amen. but I just found out two days ago about new evidence that's coming out that is just going to give the skeptics intellectual whiplash. Yeah. Oh, so wonderful. things are happening like every what? And day. And you can't tell us. Just <laughs> every, it, Lana's an old friend for years and years, so she can ask me this. We, we, Lana and I have known each other forever. Yeah. And so, uh, but, but there are things that I just met with Josh mm -hmm. McDowell for dinner the other night mm -hmm. at a fundraiser and uh, had a good chance to talk with Josh. And, and I, I can't begin to tell you that mm -hmm. there's probably a bigger discovery than the Dead Sea Scrolls <gasps> that is ready to fall out in the next eight months. Wow. wow. And it is a game changer. Hmm. I'm not at liberty Praise to talk God. about it, but I know Josh what? McDowell and I know oh. the researchers and we're in for some things. And there's a lot of people that have to really question themselves. It's going to get to the point where their skeptic meter is going to run out of gas. Yes. And people have to be f soberly facing what is going on with Bible archaeology because mm -hmm. the Bible, every time an archaeologist digs a shovel into the dirt, turns it over, dusts off an artifact, stares at it, this, this mm -hmm. ethereal arc that goes across mm -hmm. space and time that survived, somehow survived, mm -hmm. it always says that the Bible is true. Praise it God. It always does. Stand there's never been one archaeological right. find that says that the Bible's not true. Mm -hmm. so uh -huh. out of, and there's been over 25,000 fi archaeological finds mm -hmm. that, have been, that have been found with, with names, inscriptions, and things that, that validate the Bible. Mm -hmm. when is, what is enough for people? Yeah. When is it enough? When are they going to say, I'm going to stop yeah. resisting and start believing? That's right. But you know what? There's a well-oiled mm -hmm. machine mm -hmm. of atheists, agnostics, yeah. that have a distinct... Well-oiled. Uh, you know, well, well, what is it? What mm -hmm. I say to them is they say, well, 
I talk to these skeptics to say, well, the Bible contradicts itself. Mm -hmm. You know what? No. The Bible no. contradicts their lifestyle. That's right. Yes. <laughs> good. It doesn't good. contradict Bob. itself. Right. The Very Bible good. contradicts the way they're living. Yes. And you can self-justify anything. We know yeah. that. I can do that. Yeah. I'm not going to say my wife does that because it's probably being taped and I don't want to, but we can all <laughs> justify. <laughs> we can all that. say we're right. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, my wife, we got in a little bit of a discussion a couple weeks ago, and she got in a little bit. It got a little bit. You know, she thought she was right, and I thought I was right. And and she says to me, she says, "Honey, I, I think I'm right." And I said, "You know, I think I'm right." We always think we're right from our position. I said, "In the wisdom of Solomon, I said, you admit I'm right. I'll admit I'm wrong." She goes first. She goes, "Cool, you go first." <laughs> I said, "Okay." I said, "Honey, I'm wrong." She says, "You're right." <laughs> you can't ever win. Four women here. You can't win with women. So she's, she's a, and by the way, Terry, do you know if yes. Terry oh, she, I am married oh, to a woman that's never, I've been on 40 expeditions now, been oh, arrested really? five times, wow. been shot at, arrested, thrown oh. down cliffs. She's never, ever, ever complained once. Wow. She said, Beautiful. you're in God's grip. Yeah, and if we're great. believers, we need to believe not 80%, yeah. not 90%. Mm -hmm. We need to have total faith. So she says, Bob, you're in the grip of God when you're Praise out there. God you're bathed there. in prayer. Yeah. So why worry when you have the creator That's of the good. universe Amen. in your backpack Going along with you. That's sure, because great. she's throwing yes. you down a cliff a few times. So, yeah. We don't talk about that. So, you know, Bob, you talked about, um, um, la, 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 la. <laughs> this is terrible. He, I don't like when this happens. I, the, one time before you come on my show and you talked about being over there and when you got captured and can you kind of give the little Inside story of the astronaut and how, how your heart, you know, how you really mm -hmm. basically got into this archaeology? Um... Well, it's, 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 you know, people always ask me, how did you go from being a policeman? Yes, yes. yes. And no, you're I... just this guy driving around writing tickets, and you're out, I was on the SWAT team and everything, SWAT but, but team. how did I go from that to being this? Because mm -hmm. I was raised by a bartender <laughs> who, every other word wow. was a swear word wow. in the house, never, never went to church mm -hmm. once. Mm. Mother never took me to church once. Now I'm evangelist. How did the and all and the yeah. and the three brothers yeah. are all Christians. Spirit filled. Oh, and, and and how wow. how did this happen? People say, "Oh, my parents and I'm an, uh, I'm a victim." Mm -hmm. Forget it. You're not a victim. That's You're good. in control of everything. Oh, that's right. You know, that's right. forget that's this victim right. stuff. I yes. I've been hit, smacked, right. pushed. This. I've had a father that was really tough, alcoholic. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The yes. uh, on his deathbed. Mm -hmm. He asked me, Bob, what do you have that's different? Mm. Oh I've known something different about you. You're different. Mm. What I didn't, you're a different boy than I raised. I mm. said, Dad, of course I'm different. Mm. I oh, accepted Jesus. Christ and he made me different. Yeah. Oh, he says, well, he can't make me different. I've been such a bad dad. Oh. And I said, Dad, I said, you remember when, 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 when you know, Jesus was walking out of Jericho and they had the, uh, the you know, these beggars by the, war, the, the road there and they cried out, Jesus, Jesus. And, you know, when you say beggars in the Middle East, and I'm mm -hmm. around a lot of beggars, mm -hmm. they stink to high. They're mm -hmm. just horrible. They smell. They're dirty. Flies all over. They're sitting mm -hmm. in their waist and, you know, it's bad. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus it's said so to them, bring them here as they are and yeah. healed them. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, now, I said, Dad, you're like one of those beggars. Aww. I said, I'm one of those beggars. We're all yes. as dirty rags, yes. but Jesus will make you white as snow. Yes. Yes. Your Amen. sins will be erased. They'll be eradicated. Why? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. of what happened on the cross. The blood on the cross is the only solvent that can wipe away your sins. That's yeah. the only thing strong enough to cleanse your sins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the only collateral you need to get into heaven. That's right. That and proves he, he's God. He, he cried out, he grabbed my hand, and he accepted Aww. Christ. And you know what? Nice. The next day I get a call from my mother. Thank you, God. Dad is Thank underneath you, a blanket. Mm -hmm. They just put the sheet over his face. Aww. He's dead. And you know what? Aww. I had a big grin on my face. You know why? Because he's mm -hmm. because living. I'll see him for That's eternity. Right. It's right. not my last time in my life. Why cry when I, he's, his, his, his spirit's blown? He accepted Jesus. Oh, his, yes. The sign and seal of God's presence on earth That's has been right. made and stamped upon him as his, his guarantee. And he's in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at my mom and said, Mom, I'm going to be with Dad. The dad I always needed. Wow. The, the given dad. Mm -hmm. 
that cleanse dad yes. and we'll have a relationship for all eternity. Wow. Now that's something to smile about. Yeah, that's God. something and great. Your mom, and your so mom, she saved too? My mom got saved at the, at the end. That was that was it because mom was with with Nancy. You know, we're talking. Uh -huh. uh, my my mom was one of these people that said, "Well, if I if, if I walk under a uh, except Jesus, it's like walking under a ladder." You know, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm going to die the next day. It was oh. like it, so, it was oh. like there's a lot of people out there superstitious. Right. I don't yes. want to dabble in that. Yeah. Exactly. But she did. She has to face that. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. what I liked though, when you when you went off, he was an alcoholic, but you did not allow it to let you be. A victim. So you go on and you mm -hmm. get Mr. Like, what are those? Steven Seagal and all those guys. You were one of those SWAT guys and one of those <gasps> cops that went and. <laughs> well, what problems SWAT is like, I, I had a good friend of mine, <laughs> a Charles, yeah, a Mo guy. Charles Mobley, great friend of mine. I, I haven't seen mm -hmm. him in 20 years. I bet, you know, he's good friends with Nancy Paul. Mm -hmm. But he told me, he said, Bob, life is like a grinding stone. He goes, and we're the, we're the blade. He goes, if you put the blade at the wrong angle on the stone, it dulls it. If you put it at the right angle, it sharpens it to mm, fine blade. He good. said, it, how do you go stone. against the problems in life makes you sharper or yes. duller? depends on the angle that you look at it. Yes. And if you look at it from God's angle, wow, that's good. He, right. everything that happens in your life, praise God. Mm. Yes. Acts, uh, okay. Romans 8, 28, all things work towards good yes. to those who love the Lord and yes. call according yes. to His purpose. Right. So even though something bad happens, mm -hmm. it will eventually turn out to be good. We don't like it, yes. but God has a plan mm -hmm. yeah. and we need to be uh, obedient yeah, to that. It is. I, I love yeah. the way you say that because I know that and one of the shows here, um, we're going to be doing my testimony pretty soon. And it's one thing that when we have dads like you and I had, and we really want that relationship that we never had, and that's so beautiful that you'll mm -hmm. have that now in heaven. But I always said, you know, I when I become a Christian, I thought, I am not going to be a victim. What happened, the pain in life yeah. that, that I had and I had to endure, mm -hmm. I, that pain in life shaped my life. It really did. Mm -hmm. It did not take my life but it shaped my life. Mm -hmm. And it shapes all of ours, like what yeah. you're just saying right now. It's, it's wonderful. So if anybody's hurting and going through stuff today, or even yeah. if a dad's on a mm -hmm. deathbed or yeah. anything like that, boy, what, what encouragement that can give them I'm sorry, today. Sir, but I didn't answer your question. No, that's okay. I'm just going on. Yeah, it's okay. We're just good. chatting away. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's yeah, that's great. I'm usually great. with guys, yeah. okay? Yeah. Get the yeah. guy yeah. with these people. We cackle. We're girls. Yeah, so it's like... I just feel like I'm fitting right in with this thing. Anyway, so I... I'll go shopping after. We'll go shopping. Dinner and shopping. I can't picture Bob shopping with us. Okay, this is good. Ain't going to happen. We're not going there. I was I was a policeman. Got involved in a very bad FBI shooting. FBI investigating. Yeah, I, I got in a, sh a guy ambushed me, wow. shot at me for three hours. Oh Tragically, my. he was killed, and uh, I had to reassess my life. And I and I came out to Colorado and I walked through the trees and the mountains and I said, you know, do you want me to be a cop? Where do you want me to be? And 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 just the just the you know what it's like here in the spring when the when the sap oh. rises and the, and the sun hits yes. it and you get that aroma of the pine trees yeah. and, and the Nothing loamy like smell it. in the forest. And I said, oh, this is so wonderful. It was medicinal, mm. almost cathartic moment. And, and I said, I, I'm going to come to the mountains. And, and I came out here and I met a man right away named Jim Irwin. Uh, and uh, the, came, astronaut. the astronaut that astronaut. Astronaut. walked on the moon, first one to drive yes. the car on the moon. Yeah. And he was the first one who drove that little car on the moon. And Jim said, hey, let's go look for Noah's Ark. And, and I always thought people that look for a Noah's Ark wrap tinfoil around their head and look at the mothership. I mean, they're crazies. But here's an astronaut, a scientist that's been to the moon. He said, let's go look for Noah's Ark. And I did, and I got the bug. And I loved exploration. I loved the fact that just I'm thinking, I, I visualized myself standing on the skid of this helicopter, doors off. Freezing ice blowing, zooming across Mount Ararat, <laughs> looking like, down I mean, and seeing, seeing these, you know, rotting bones of Noah's Ark, these oh, rotting timbers, yes. and it'd be the greatest find of all time. Oh, so that's pretty God. cool stuff. So I really got excited about that. Yes. Wow. So yeah. didn't, but weren't you hired to kind of like go up there kind of as a bodyguard? I was a bodyguard. I was a, well, Jim Irwin said, the, the Kurds over there, which are the terrorists today, the PKK, they call them the terrorists, but they're, they're, they call themselves freedom fighters. But there's the Turkish government and the Kurds, and they've been fighting forever over there. And uh, uh, he said, I think the Kurds want to capture me to bring worldwide attention to their cause. Oh my. So yeah, he's, wow. he's the most famous guy that's ever been in the, in, in that, on that mountain. Hmm. So they all hear that Jim Irwin's coming. So the rumors were they're going to capture him. So I was his bodyguard. So I wore a t-shirt the whole time that annoyed Jim to no end, but I had a t-shirt on the whole time that said, 
I am not Jim Irwin. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they wouldn't mistake me for the astronaut. If they did want to capture him, yeah. they can take Jim and I'd probably go. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, but so you, you save him. Oh, I'm sorry, go yes, ahead. Yes, yes. You well, were saved when you went to the mountain with him. Well, yeah, because when I, when I was a boy and I was going through that with, with, the, with the, you know, my, my dad thing, uh, I was 12 years old. Well, my dad, as we just talked about, was, was a bartender. And uh, on Sunday morning, it was a time to get out of the house. He'd been drinking on Saturday night. Uh, every Saturday night, it was like clockwork. He'd get really drunk. And then the next day, about 10 to 12, we had to get out of the house because he'd get his breakfast around noon and he'd, he'd come out of that little funk thing. So we dri I'd drive my bicycle around the neighborhood and all of a sudden I'm driving my bicycle for two hours every time, just kind of dumb kid, no money on Sunday, everybody's gone and families are doing things. And I noticed this thing said free donuts and it was a table covered with donuts and, and cocoa at and, a and at a church there. And I pull up and I go up there and I go up and I say free donuts. So I, I walk <laughs> and I'm eating these donuts and then all of a sudden uh, the next thing you know, the crowd goes in, and I go in with the crowd. And then I'm sitting down in church, and the sermon and the music and everything else, and they pass a plate of money in front of me, and it's full of money. And I took $20. It's a free money. It's free. So I put the $20 in my pocket. They pass the plate, and then it comes around. So the next Sunday, I go back, do it again. So obviously, money. you'd never you been, never been to church. And, and so wow. the thing is, is that they had softball, and they had cocoa, and they had donuts. So as I'm at the church, and a year later, I got the award for perfect attendance. Oh, wow. And so the That's pastor amazing. says, where are your mother and father? I said, they don't bring me, I ride my bike. Well, did they tell you to go? No, did they make you go? No, I said, I come for your donuts. I said, your sermon's really not that good. It's <laughs> really good. So, and I get free money out of the plate now and then. Oh, I said, goodness. that is even so, but he was so free impressed. Money. He sent me to uh, a boys' camp in San Diego called Aww. Green Oaks Boys Camp. I know and what And there, is. what they do is, you know what those Christian camps do is they give you donuts. Yeah. And they worry oh, out for a week, and then there's a come to Jesus Friday night, and I did, so I'm all donut. So when I left, you know, it, it, as I was looking for a career after college, I thought to myself, I'm already addicted to donuts. Why not become a policeman? <laughs> so I became Because they do that same Dunkin' Donuts. 12, 12 years, years old, oh, going wow. to church by myself. Wow. So that's how I got in, and then oh. I met Jim Irwin, and then the, the rest is history. Because I thought that on the mountain or something, you had some experience, so that was just an experience with the Holy Spirit? Well, you, you know what happens when you're young and you accept Jesus, and then you get, what, what happens when you hit okay. 14, 15, there is a peer pressure is tremendous yeah. in yes. our schools. Yeah. That's where I asked and, and, you And you know, the world presents itself mm -hmm. in a slick way. Yes. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. I'm leaving my mm -hmm. my roots. The donuts weren't that as exciting, you know. The, you know, mm -hmm. and I am now a teenager, mm -hmm. and I just get sucked into that vortex. Oh. Yes. And then, so you start becoming totally into the world. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until I went with Jim Irwin over mm -hmm. looking for Noah's wow. Ark and Mount Sinai, and mm -hmm. it was really the Mount Sinai search that I was sitting in a mm -hmm. cell with a gun to my head in the middle of the desert, wow. looking for the real Mount Sinai, and the guards were over me, spitting on me, calling me a Jew cocking the guns, pretending like they're going to blow my brains out, and flinching, you know, and, and I'm thinking to myself, this is it. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. I'm finally, I'm going to be an unmarked grave for all eternity in the sand. Mm -hmm. I've been arrested out there uh, in the middle of the desert. They're thinking we're Jewish spies. And so Larry, uh, I, I told Larry, I said, mm -hmm. I, I think we're going to die. So, you know, I made that agreement with God. I said, okay, if you get me out of this, I'll go out and preach your word wow. for the rest of my life. And you know how you can negotiate with God? Like yeah. he's up there saying, okay, sure. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. But I, made, I went up that mountain full of adventure and full of myself. Mm. And I came down from that mountain a broken man, Praise needing God. to be saved. And when you have nothing but faith left, that's when your faith is the that's best. Good, when, yeah. you, when you are at the Red Sea like Moses, and everybody's grumbling, and there's the sea in front of you, and the army's coming on you. That's wow. when God is going to do the greatest thing yeah. in your life. So he said, I said, God, I'm going to do this. Well, look at me now. I sold the business oh. to my brother Paul. <laughs> we, I went out, and I've been evangelizing now Praise nonstop God. every day because not only am I fulfilling that obligation with God, but he's filled my heart with the Spirit because when you tell the truth, it mm. fills you up with Praise excitement God. more than yeah. anything you can get. Amen. Nothing Amen. meets the excitement that comes through having God pouring in your heart every day. Did you lead your brothers to the Lord? Uh, and then I want to know what did. Nancy did. My, Nancy. my brother actually was an air traffic controller, and then oh. he got fired by Ronald Reagan. Huh. Oh, and then Nancy, it was wow. perfect time. Uh -huh. You know, he had, he'd hit bottom, and 
And guess wow. what God did? Rebuilt him. Now, you all know Paul Cornuk. He's one of the greatest guys. Yes. In fact, my yes, brother Paul is. is my hero. He yeah. is a wonderful man. And, oh, wonderful. and, and he was totally, nice? totally mocked Nancy when she used to go to church. Wow. And now look at him. Now oh, him. now he loves so the Lord. In this, teaches and everything else. But tell us, you know what's yeah, important, though? Yeah, yeah I just want to know one that. thing. Yeah, <laughs> no, I want to know one thing. Seriously, where you left off, you I really want to know be this. Here. <laughs> when they had a gun to your head, was that the time that, I mean, did you get out, or was that the time when you gave him, you know, well, oh, that's what I want, the sleeping pills. Yeah, the, yeah. No, but oh. you know what, besides that, you were talking about how true the Bible is. Oh, maybe we better yeah, do we, that. Yeah. We'll get on that one later. Okay. Well, yeah, because this is a long story. Do you want to know, know, you know about the time. sleeping pills, or, or how do Yeah, I think, I, really can we tell minutes? it in two minutes? I can tell it in two minutes. Okay, go for it. Well, the sleeping pill story, I was just out in Hollywood day for yesterday meeting with the top producer. I'm not going to name names, but top, top, top producer, billion dollar shows. And, um, and what it was was when Larry and I were arrested in that, in that cell, uh, they said, he said, you know, Bob, we're, we're going to be killed out here. And Larry says, he's a doctor and points to me and says, he's a doctor. <laughs> so all the guards came up for treatment thinking I'm a doctor now. Oh, this and is the first in Saudi thing, Arabia, yeah, right? in, in the middle of the desert. I mean, long robes, wow. goatees. I mean, just out of central casting for Lawrence Arabia. Cut <laughs> hand. And so I put band roll on on the hand and then the next had a bed back. And then the next guy comes up and he was, he had a bad thing. And I gave him sleeping pills. I had sleeping pills with him. So I gave five sleeping pills to each one of the guards. They fell asleep. We escaped. And now they want to make a oh, movie out of it. Brilliant. Oh, is yeah. that so, oh, so that's great. Great. brilliant. Oh, gosh. Praise and you know God. what? We'll probably tell a little bit more of that story when we get back. Bob mm -hmm. will be with us for the next two weeks. Make sure you tell your friends you want to hear the rest of all these yeah. stories because amazing things in his life. An amazing man of God. Please, before we go, if you don't know Jesus, that's what we're all about here. That's who we're talking about. About. That's who saved us and loves us and loves you and will save you. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart that you died, rose again, and coming back to take me. I can't do it anymore. I receive you. And if you did that, please call our prayer lines, 307-637-PRAY-7729. We will get you a Bible. won't solicit you, but we will help you along your way. We love you, but you know what? Jesus adores you. Yes. He loves you so much. Remember, call the prayer lines, 307-637-PRAY. Go to Bible, uh, BaseInstitute.com, across the bottom of the screen. Check out Bible. See you next program. Goodbye for today.